G'day everyone, so for this video, hopefully, I'll be covering my most ambitious paint project yet, which could or could not go really badly. So, it's the afternoon beforehand, I'm going to start tomorrow morning, and I'm only, I'm only here by myself, so I can't have someone, normally have someone help me film while I'm mixing paint and spraying and stuff, this won't happen this time, so I'm just going to mainly do a time lapse of the whole thing, but basically, my 5th gen prelude, that's been... It hasn't been the subject of a few videos, but we've seen the... I made the wing in one video, and then we fixed the guard roll to do the guards in another video. And the car's all ready for paint. I'm going to be doing it in the Jax, which is like a 1990s JTCC touring car livery. And it's really complicated, and I've never done anything like it before. So, we'll have a quick look at it. So, I've basically just been going off this model to go off where all the, the um, lines and that have to go. The actual sponsoring that's covered in glide wrap so I can pick it up tomorrow after I'm painting and not, <laughs> not cover it in paint if I have to look at it. But basically the sponsors I'll vinyl cut as stickers and all the colours are going to be sprayed on. Well, this is all my supplies. I'll we'll open the paints, have a look at them. So this is going to be hard to do because I've never painted a multicoloured car before and this is about as difficult as a multicoloured thing is going to get because there's so many different colours. So you might say that I did my what is it, my police car, which was multicoloured, but I sort of cheated with that because I painted the white and then gave it a few days to dry and then re-sanded it up to a tape line and painted the black. So that was kind of just two single colour paint jobs, whereas this has to be done properly like a multicolour paint job. So I'll run over the plan. So basically I've vinyl cut these, which are for the blue zigzags. And then all the white dividers will be normal tape using a fine line thin tape. So I've got a um, I've got a front guard in there that I'll be testing each tape pull on before I do it. But basically the plan is start with the blue and then spray the rough area that has to be blue. Apply the vinyl zigzag and then spray the whole car white and then Mask off all the areas except for what I want to be green, do the green, and then mask off again, orange, mask off again, red. The hard part is, if I spray it blue, I then have to tape over the blue, which is fine. But, if I spray the blue, and leave it for two days, so it's nice and dry, I can put the tape on it, which is not going to be a problem, it won't pull the paint off, but, when I spray the next colour, the white, it won't stick to the blue anymore. And the same thing, I can't then spray the whole car white, leave it for two days to make sure it's dry and then spray the green because although leaving it for two days will ensure it doesn't come off with the tape it will stop it, it will stop the green sticking to it. So the recommended time for these paints, it says on the sides of the tins is you got 10 to 15 minutes for them to be dried and then any time after that up to a maximum of like an hour-ish you can put tape on and it's dry enough that the tape will stick but wet enough that the next layer of paint would stick. So if you screw that up Either the, you'll paint it all and the paint will fall off over a few days that's on dry paint or the tape will pull it off. So I have to be everything laid out, organised, I need to know exactly how I'm going to lay the lines and then I have to spray the next colour, wait the correct amount of time, have it masked in time to spray the next colour. And remember, because there's blue exposed, the time from the first blue coat to the last red coat has to not be longer than the full drying time of the blue to the red, otherwise the red won't stick, or the clear won't stick to the blue, the clear won't stick to any of it. So, I've got to spray blue, white, green, orange, red, those could be in any order because they don't actually go on top of each other, and then I've got a clear coat. I really hope I get it right because there's a fair chunk of money in the paint, as I'm sure anyone that's priced up paint knows, and there's a lot of work gone into the car, and the police car runs out of Rego next week, so I have to drive this car to work like next week so I've got two days to get this correct. As far as picking the colours, I get it from a shop called Allard's in Fishwick, they've been super helpful, the guy in there is always really good. I pretty much just bought him the car and said can you please make me these paints, and then he went through by hand and matched up all the colours and then gave me a special code in the paint system so you can see this is actually called Jack's JTCC Honda Green, the, the white, the blue, he actually made up all the paints so thanks to them, they're not like sponsored or anything, it's just helpful. So, I'll get these closed up before dirt goes in them, I just wanted to show everyone. But, I'll make sure, I'm going to go over ten more times in the order I'm going to do everything. Make sure I have everything laid out, and then get up tomorrow morning and start spraying. So, fingers crossed. So, quick note before we get started. One of the things I was excited about most was watching the time lapse from the GoPro. Turns out, Hero 5s, unless you've done a firmware update, just delete four out of five of the time lapses after they're recorded. So, 
I've got one of the zigzags going on, one of the white going on, and that's it. They're all missing. So I still have the DSLR footage, which is enough for a video to show what I was doing, but it's really disappointing that the whole time lapse from start to finish would have been awesome, and it's gone. But here's what I got. All right, so I'm, next morning, I'm all dressed up in the plastic sweaty sperm suit. I'm gonna go in, give it a final wipe down for wax and grease, and give it a wipe with a tack rag. This is just a rag with like glue in it, and so it really pulls off any last remaining bits of dust. So we'll give it a final clean up, ready to start with the blue layer first. All right, tack rag's done. It's only 25 degrees in the booth, but the 25 degrees mixed with the plastic suit, freaking sweating my ass off. <laughs> the, um, the suit is not for keeping clean, which is what you sort of initially expect. It's to keep dust off stuff. It's like a lint-free suit. Other people will come and spray stuff here, and people that wear a suit versus people that do it in shorts and a t-shirt, it's a huge difference in how much dust is in the car, in, like in the paint. If you're wearing just a t-shirt and you're like spraying around, you're just like producing huge amounts of dust. So it makes a big difference wearing the plastic suit versus just doing it in a t-shirt and stuff. Okay, I've got one coat of the blue left and it's getting fine how much paint I have left. The blue one only got half a litre and the other colours are all a litre. But uh, I'm spreading it out more than I was sort of planning on to get the line in the right place. So hopefully I don't run out of blue because that would be bad right from the start. Alright, so that's the blue done. I wouldn't say I ran out of paint, but I would definitely have liked to put another coat on. I was really imagining just like thin strips where the zigzags have to go. But as I was spraying it, I was sort of getting fatter and fatter and I sort of lose track of where I was supposed to be. And so I've ended up spraying a lot more of the panel blue. And hopefully the bit that I actually need to be blue has a full coverage of blue. So I didn't quite run out, but I definitely would have liked to have more. So I guess I ran out in that respect. Anyway, um, give this 45 minutes to dry and then we start putting the zigzag vinyl on over it and see what happens. So we've got a few minutes left till that's cooked enough that we can go back in. This booth is at the moment it's at 25 degrees and it'll stay that for the whole day because that's the time, like the temperature that the times the paint are plastered anyway. It says on the paint tin all the times are at 25 degrees. So the booth runs on diesel. I just did a servo run on the scooter Vietnam spec to get another thing and got a chocolate milk. So once that's good to go, we'll go in, put our vinyl on. <laughs> all right, so I'm getting worked out where I'm gonna put the masking tape down. I have some photos that I took when I was painting the car where I put the strips down and sort of taped them on and just eyed it. And after doing that, I put these texture marks and there's one there one there, there's one here, showing me where to put the lines. So that's what I tried to use to guide myself when I was spraying. It didn't work perfectly, but it was close. So what I'm doing now is I've got this little laser. This is what I use to do the straight line on the police car. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I can laser the line down. I couldn't use that when I was spraying because it would take too long to move the laser for every single line. But what I'm masking up now, the laser will give me a straight line and I can make sure it's in the center of where there's good paint. So like maybe this one I wanted that much lower, but if it was lower, it was in the sort of faded area. So I've moved it up a bit. So I should be able to whip that and make sure I'm in the middle of where the nice blue paint is. But we'll see how it goes. Got five more minutes and then we'll start putting vinyl on it. I'll put the vinyl on this first, which is just a test panel. See if it pulls the paint up and then we'll move on to the rest of the car. So it's been 45 minutes. I've got my three kinds of tape that have to stick to this. Uh, this one's marked as test because it didn't cut out properly. So we'll stick it on here, see what happens. Unfortunately, I can't video it for you because the laser's hogged in the tripod, but give me a second and then we'll stick it on. Okay, so here's our removal test, the fine line tape. Doesn't seem to pull any paint with it. Masking tape. Doesn't seem to have left a mark or pulled any paint with it, so that's a good start. I'll put this on next. Okay, does it take the paint with it? No, it doesn't. This actually feels less sticky than the... I actually need to get that in the shot. This feels less sticky than the masking tape does. This is like specific vinyl for masking, so that seems pretty good to me. On to the rest of the car now. Okay, finished masking up the blue. That was a bit of a disaster. I'll go over it after. I've got to start mixing the white and paint it now because it took me ages to get the blue done. <laughs> I 
All right, so the first coat of white paint is on over the zigzags. The zigzags came out pretty badly. So I cut four or five spares, like full lengths of spare, because I'm like, there's no way I'm going to use that many spare ones. I only thought if I stick two together. But as you lay them, because they're getting pulled like this, they always pull, or they, they always pull the same way. And so every single one wanted to go on as a curve. So I was trying to work the curve back in the opposite direction. And I was sort of getting a hang of it by the end, but like the ones on the bonnet, they're not straight lines, they're curves. So I'm hoping it's one of those things you don't really notice until you point it out. I just notice it because I know it's there. But I was going to redo the bonnet and then I ended up screwing up the last side even worse than the bonnet. So I peeled all those off and I was lucky. A couple of ones that I peeled off, I stuck back on the backing and I was able to reuse that one because I was short by about 200 mil. So it's not great, it's looking a bit hairy. Hopefully once all the other fluoro colours are on there it distracts you from the fact that the blue lines aren't straight and aren't parallel. But I really hope it looks okay because that's annoying if they're that off. Because it's not even like I can fix it once it's painted. It's That's how it's going to be. So hopefully it looks good. Give it five minutes, next coat of white. So the next white coat's just drying. I'm much happier with how my wing looks now that it's one colour. I thought it'd look better once it's painted, but yeah, the wing's pretty cool. It's exactly what I wanted. So you can't really see the zigzags anymore, like there it is, because they're painted over. But I don't know if you can see the ones on the bonnet. They're friggin' like that way, and then this one's doing the same thing. Uh, the ones on this side were even worse, but I managed to pull them off and stick the bottom one back on and get it straighter. But my only worry is once the actual jack's riding goes in the middle, wherever the little car's gone, once the riding goes on it, I think the gap between the top and the bottom of the riding will make it really obvious that they're not straight, but I hope not. We'll see how it goes. And actually, I'll probably come do the next coat on this. So maybe one or two more coats of white. I've got heaps of white paint, which is good. So one or two more coats of white, and then off we go. Well, it's very dark. All right, so I've got five, four, I forget, four or five coats of white, which is our white base coat done. I've always liked white on cars, like white cars look good, and I've always liked white fifth gens. And now I have a white fifth gen, but it's not going to be white for very long, but we'll go in and have a quick look at it. So the white isn't particularly glossy because I haven't sprayed it on super thick because I don't want it building up around the stenciled on zigzags. The white just makes the fluoro like pop heaps more and it means you need less fluoro paint to cover the underside. So the white's shown up all the imperfections. For some reason along this rail here, there's these little dots, which means, which is like silicon or oil. It's just in this section on the roof. So I don't know what was there, and I wiped this car down so many times, but apparently there was still stuff on it. So there's a few dots there. There's a bit down here where the bumper was damaged, and there's a few big chunks of oil or something coming out of the cracks in the bumper. Once again, can't fix that. We can, but I didn't fix that. But other than that, the white looks good. It's only an undercoat. You only see little strips of it, so everything looks nice. Very happy with how my wing looks, but yeah, the car looks pretty cool in white. <laughs> This is, the white is the last big wait, 45 minutes, and then I'll do all the lines, and then we've got the next colours. Alright, so I'm going back in to mask the colours. This time, instead of the zigzags, it's just tape, so it should be easier. They're straight lines, the other one was supposed to be straight lines too, but it's tape, so I can have 100 goes because I've got heaps of tape. And they don't have to be parallel or line up with anything that will sort of abstract, so it should be a lot easier. And, I found that in my scrunched up rubbish pile, so <laughs> I had one left still, I didn't have to reuse one. But the one I reused stuck okay anyway, so... Whatever, tape time. I'm gonna test it on the test panel, and then if it's good, tape time again. So our test one's looking good. I've put a piece on and off a bunch of times a few different places, it all seems to have stuck. This is a hundred times easier to actually lay in a straight line, or straight-ish, straight enough anyway, so time for the rest of the car. Okay, so all the lines are marked out, masking tape center and then fine line to give it a good edge. The hardest bit was definitely these, because obviously that tape wants to go around and this way, but it needs to go around and match up. So that was the hardest bit. Other than that, this was pretty easy and it was pretty fun to do. I just copied a little model. So next step, cover everything that I don't want to be red. We're going to do red first, orange and green, because that's darkest to lightest, so the red should show the overspray of the other ones on it the least, or at least that's my theory. So cover everything that's not red. Alright, I'm sweating my ass off doing this. We're finally taped up, ready for the red to go on. First colour. I'm not looking forward to doing the next one of these. This is hard work, but first colour, so that's exciting. I'm so thirsty. Alright, so the red is... What? The red's painted. 
I started at about 12 o'clock, it's now 6 o'clock. This paint has 8 hours. It's 8 hours is the limit from when you can't spray over the base layer anymore. So I've given this one 20 minutes now instead of the 40 minutes I've been giving the other ones. I've got to pull the paper off, mask, cover the red that I've just painted, uncover the orange, leave the green covered, spray the next coat. I've got two hours to get the orange and the green and the clear down. So hopefully we get there. It's going to be cutting it fine. I've decided to try and save time. I'm going to start unmasking it while the paint's still wet or wet-ish. I'll be really careful not to touch the paint and then I can start like by the time I finish unmasking it, I should be able to start taping up over the top of the red, so... So I've started lifting the paper off, and you can see this is lifted up from that corner, and the orange is blown through underneath. So that's going to uh, the red's blown through underneath, so that's going to get painted orange, but under here, where it's supposed to be white, is going to be pretty red, I think. We'll have to see how, there's a few spots in these, like, little dips where I noticed was like that. We'll have to see what it looks like once it's all pulled off. Might have to do some touching up. The other thing is pulling the tape off has pulled the fine line edging off, so I'll have to relay the fine line. But this shouldn't take too long, at least, because I can leave the green covered where the green's going to be and just pull off the orange bits and then fix up where I need to fix up. All right, there was a few mini heart attacks where the white peeled off, but this is on the tape. That's what we don't want happening down here, but so far we're all good. That's the red covered, orange uncovered. Ready to spray the orange, so. Mix up the orange paint and get in here as quick as I can. First coat of orange, done. All right, the orange is done. There's a few little spots like we have with the red, especially in these curves of the bumper, where it kept lifting up and I kept pressing it back down. So hopefully I didn't get too much orange into the white border. But other than that, it looks okay. Give this half an hour. It's, we'll do the same as with the red, we won't give it as long, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour and then we'll mask over it without touching it, without putting tape on it at least and we'll uncover the green and then the green is the last colour and then I've got to go to the servo now and get more diesel because I was without a diesel because the bridge has been running all day flat out and it's not a super warm day but it's holding 25 degrees so anyway, servo run, fuel, 20 minutes, green coat, next and last colour coat, then clear coat once the green goes. Alright, just went did a servo run, got diesel again because the booth is running out. There was a guy at the petrol station, like in the middle of the car park with two white rabbits taking photos of them. He wasn't evident which car he came from, if he even came by car, but that was weird, so whatever. Uh, this has been about 15 minutes. I'm about seven and a half hours since I laid the blue at the start and this paint is eight hours maximum before re after recoating or to recoat. I can probably stretch that a little bit. I'm going to go and check if the orange is good to go yet and we're going to try and mask over it with it still as it is because I'm running out of time. So we can touch the tape. Uh, it's, it's tacky. Well, like it's not tacky, it's soft. We're out of test panel. It's soft, I reckon. Uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, I reckon I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to try and cover it up and we'll mask the green. Get the green sprayed on because I'm going to run out of time otherwise. This has been a hell of a job. Was, this is the busiest I've been for eight hours straight ever, probably. <laughs> I'm going and doing through the masking. I just noticed I've accidentally created a martini livery. Alright, ready for the green. Last colour. There was an orange section on the roof that I found unmasking it that I missed with the orange. But oh, I don't know if you can see it on this little model. It's right at the front under the S just there, so that's going to be green now. But I realised on the model they actually forgot to put the white border. So I'm not the only person that forgets that little triangle. But so far, that looks like the only mistake. So, green mixing time. Oh yeah. Looking good. First coat done. So, last coat of green is on. We're currently running over time, about half an hour, over eight hours at the moment. So the green, because we don't have to be putting paper over it, I can unmask it while it's still very wet. So we'll give it 10 minutes or so, and then I'll pull the paper off, and then we'll mix up clear. So I'll clean the gun, ready for clear coat. And then next step, hopefully I don't put my fingerprints in the green when I'm pulling the paper off. All right, I'm up to GoPro time-lapse battery number three, but just touched it, it's been about 10 minutes, it feels dry enough, I'm going to start pulling the tape off. So over to the GoPro again. It only hit me just as I started pulling it off, 
I'm very nervous now because this is it. Once it's pulled off, this is what it looks like, and it's going to be like that forever. I'm not fixing anything, so I've tried. Okay, anyway, pull it off. Tape time. Untape time. Oh yeah, it's a pretty clean line. Yeah, get off my gloves. As much as I would love to video the entire untaping thing like this, it's very hard to do with one hand. It's looking pretty cool. I just picked up this edge. This is the first of the zigzags showing the blue. Come on, blue paint, don't come off with the sticker. Oh, yes, this stencil vinyl makes friggin' nice edges. Oh, I really hope the fact that these aren't straight isn't that noticeable. <laughs> Not perfect by a long way, but it, it's the colour I wanted. <laughs> it's pretty cool. We're almost ready for well, we're ready to clear coat now. These two spots here where it went through, not great. I might actually paint a white square over that after it's cleared. I'm not touching anything till after it's cleared. And um, the vinyl left some sticky residue, which I'm hoping, which is annoying because it's a sticker that's made for this. I'm hoping it disappears when I clear it. Not a single bit of paint lifted, except the last bit I pulled off on the roof. There, lifted. But thankfully it's on the... Thankfully it's on the roof, which is dark blue already, so it's not super obvious, and it's on the roof, so it's all good. Would have been a lot worse if one of the silver panels lifted, and it would have been way more noticeable. But, I'll mix up some clear, we'll clear it so it's nice and shiny, and then finally get a proper look, see what it looks like. First coat of clear, done, it's looking shiny. Give it 10 minutes, put the next one on. Uh, anyone want some paper? <laughs> this is like, this car's used like four or five cars worth of masking tape and paper, but it looks pretty cool. So, last coat of clear, done. I think there's like three coats on it, I forget. Uh, I'm so tired, my back hurts, and my arm is so sore from holding the gun. I ended up spraying with my left hand for the roof the last couple of times because I couldn't hold my arm up anymore. But, um, we'll go in and have a look, shall we? So, I've got a bit of paper to clean up. But, car looks pretty nice. So I'm just waiting for the clear to dry. Well, dry enough that I can pull the tape off the windows. If you leave it overnight and then pull the tape off the windows, if the paint's too hard, it all flakes off and sticks everything and it's a pain, so... I'll let it dry and then pull the tape off the windows. Looks nice now that's all shiny. All up, it looks pretty good. There's a few little imperfections like where that bit was and I don't know. There's a bit of orange on the white just there. I think that's probably the worst, the worst one. But other than that, looks pretty good. The bit where the paint peeled up on the roof isn't too bad. It's just like there's a black square now but I can deal with that. I'm happy with my wing, suits the, the wing looked a bit obnoxious on the stock car, but now with the paint job, it looks really good. I'm keen to get it all apart. I touched the boot lid with the hose when I was trying to paint the underside of the wing, but that pretty much seems to have disappeared. I've got friggin' paper stuck to my feet. But yeah, my, um, my test panel will be a cool thing to hang up in the shed, except I masked it retardedly. That's the bit that's supposed to be white, and then it also pulled a shitload of the paint off because I didn't really prep this that well because it was just an experiment. But, I don't know, it looks pretty cool as well. But yeah, wait this a bit longer, pull the window trim and stuff off. It looks pretty cool. This is going to be a good daily driver. <laughs> Alright, next morning, finally get to see what it looks like in the sun. Shadow, shadow puppets. Wait, it's a dog. Anyway. Mm. So cool to finally see it in the sun. So what I should do now is clean up the huge amount of paper and stuff that's like absolutely everywhere through the booth. What I'm going to do instead is put the 
lights and the tail lights and everything back in it and see how it looks. So there you have it, paint job finished. Pretty happy with how my wing came out. It suits the um, <laughs> suits the style of the car now. Super keen for my new wheels to get here, but at the moment that's the car finished. I've sort of put the head the headlights and actually bolted in, so they're kind of sitting weird. But once it's all put together, this is going back onto daily driving duties, which should be cool. So hopefully you liked the video. Make sure you subscribe to see the next stuff because next thing that's happening is after this has a week or so to dry, it's getting all the stickers for all the sponsors and the livery and everything. So. I'll see everybody on the next video. Goodbye.